trade in for TouchTune at your Magnavox dealer now. Trade in your old TV for any new Magnavox TouchTune color television and save big. Just in time for football season. And just for touching any TouchTune television, you'll be handed free the official 1978 NFL record manual. Choose from a wide range of prices and styles during trade-in for TouchTune time. Trade and save at your Magnavox dealer now. Tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports presents same-day coverage of the finals of the U.S. Clay Court Championships from Indianapolis. That's tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern. At Mile High Stadium, Dallas owns the football. Score tied at 7-7. Line of scrimmage, their own 24. Danny White, the Dallas quarterback. For set in Newhouse, the running back as White rolls out. We'll keep it. Huddleston again on Bob and the tackle as White goes down at first base. A little variation of the same play they ran early and gave the ball to the back going up the middle. Didn't make any yards. This time, Danny White keeps the ball as he fakes the door set. He gave it to him before. This time, he keeps it on a rollout. Could have actually thrown a short pattern there. Elected to run with it. Why, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do not I've know. See, I've right. seen you run with it. <laughs> Seldom. Second and five. Pearson went in motion. Dorsett swings to the outside. Breaks one. And then goes out of bounds at the Denver bench. Let's go down to Irv Cross for a report. You know that uh, you probably set the ball seven yards from the center in your field goal. So the Dallas Cowboys set their ball back seven yards, two feet, because the defensive linemen are so tall now they have to get that extra two feet to get the ball away. The Denver Broncos were only set back seven yards from the line of scrimmage, had that last kick blocked. So maybe that uh, two-foot difference makes a big difference, eh? Irv, I think they could have been back eight yards <laughs> had it been blocked. Uh, too tall is pretty tall, <laughs> isn't he? <laughs> too tall is not too tall. He is 6'9", but... At the end of last year, he became one of the standouts in the Dallas defense and had a great Super Bowl. In fact, great playoff. Yes. I thought he had a chance to be the most valuable player. Pat, you know, uh, Tutal is still growing, too. Is he? He is still growing. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> he might level off around 285 or 290 when he finally grows up. Irv, you got to stay away from that Gatorade on the sideline. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. <laughs> Third and one for Dallas. Newhouse and Dorsett, two setbacks. Everything is sort of squeezed together. Denver almost jumped, but they didn't. Yes, they did. Flag goes down on the sideline. I think they got him for a little encroachment there. Change the count a little bit. I don't care how many times you practice this as a defensive team, and it even happens. Oh, a little fumble. White, maybe he, he gets it back, but uh, the offside penalty was called. Take a look at it from the top. You'll see him jump here. This is a view from our sky eye. There's the movement right there. The encroachment, but White come, misses that ball. Gets it back, but they come up with a first down on the penalty. Defense, offside, first down. Checking to see if Dallas had a different center. But I believe it's still Fitzgerald. They got their number one offensive unit. They got Rafferty back in there. Frederick. Scott. I think they have made a change at the Yes, they have. It's Jim Cooper. It's going to Jim Cooper. <laughs> Again, the stumbling. Couldn't uh, get the handle up. on it. The exchange again, Pat. Right. Uh, Cooper. Cooper and White not making the exchange. Take a look at it right here. It looks like the ball got up. Scott coming across, the guard coming across, but uh, Danny White lost the handle again. You see it here. Looks like the ball comes up. A lot of times, a lot of trouble. 
And I know there's a guy sitting in Washington watching this thing that doesn't <laughs> want to hear this. But boy, when you put that man on the center's nose, that causes some bad exchanges at times. And uh, looked like he did get the ball up there then. Now we've got John Fitzgerald back in at center. Second and six. Dorset has enough for a first down, I believe. Very close to it. Stopped by Jackson and Huddleston again. Little, little check down out of the backfield. A second back out of the backfield. A little delay. Comes across, sets up. There's the ball. He stays in there longer this time. He had to make sure. Waggle action one way. Can't find the receiver and goes back under the pressure. Dumps it off to Dorsett. Out come the sticks to measure now as you look at the conclusion of that last play to see if they got the first. They did. 7.27 left to play in the third quarter. Score still tied at seven apiece. Cowboys got a touchdown pass from Roger Staubach to Tony Hill. There he is. Talking with Gene Stallings. Dallas has fumbled four times already. Well, I'm just a little upset about something, man. Huh? Yeah. Hand off Newhouse. And Newhouse spurns for about five. Golden Richards is into a fracas downfield with somebody. <laughs> with two people, Billy Thompson yeah. and Lewis Wright. Be coming down here throwing blocks at us. <laughs> yeah. We can't hit you anymore. <laughs> That's right. Don't hit us. They don't want any parts of it. Second and five, it'll be at the 47 as Dallas moves into Denver territory on that last five-yard gain by Newhouse. Jay Saldi, the tight end, moves up on the line of scrimmage as Danny White calls the signals. Gets straight ahead Newhouse. Still squirming. Inside the 45 to about the 44. Behind the blocking of Pat Donovan, he was stopped by Randy Gratishaw. Running straight at it sometimes isn't a bad idea. You like to go misdirection and get that quick reacting defense so you can take sides. But just to keep them honest, you go straight at them and hope that man on the nose guard or the nose guard himself takes the wrong side. And if he does, you find a little daylight. Attendance has been announced at 75,092. The date is August the 12th. On the rollout, White hits through house, and Dallas has another first down. He goes down about the 37. Rob Nairn buried Newhouse. Get a little play action again. They've whatever was happening as far as the exchange is concerned, they've uh, rectified. Newhouse. It's that short arms. <laughs> it gets all involved catching that thing, doesn't he? <laughs> he licked it in, though. Somebody once said his legs are bigger around than they are long. And now you're looking at uh, Danny White going to the line of scrimmage, and one of the reasons they may have worked out that exchange is they brought Fitzgerald back in at center. That's right. Dorsett looking for some place to go. Not finding it. What a fine tackle by Steve Foley. Here's a quarterback at Tulane. Boy, did he come up. Watch this. Again, running the daylight. No, no room up front. No hole to run to. Dorsett with his quickness getting outside. Going around Bryson Manor. But Steve Foley out of nowhere. Good tackle. Dorsett, of course, was hurt. And really took him a long time to get well in the offseason when they opened training camp. His calf was still bothering him. His knee was still bothering him. And he still does not look like he's recaptured the lightning quickness he had. Here's Danny White firing down the middle, caught by Drew Pearson. White was really hit just as he let it go by Lyle Alzado. Randy Gratishar made the tackle on Pearson. It'll be third down. Again, the play action. See it more and more, Pat. The people going to the little fake. After they run the ball and get a few yards, they go to the little fake and come back and throw the short pass. You watch this right here. White going back. 
hasn't seen anybody but the man number 70 come in there's a guy that forced that fumble Paul Smith earlier gives him a little shot pushes him down he was kind of kind to him then he didn't bruise him he could have done more <laughs> I thought it was Alzado but it was Smith timeout taken by Dallas as White goes over to talk to Tom Landry and Jim Myers and so it's still tied at seven apiece with just over three and a half minutes left to play in the third quarter at Denver. When you break horses for a living and you do it wrong, they can break you first. But when you do it right, you can turn a terrified animal into a horse a man can count on. And now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. If you've got the time, if you've got the time, we've got the beer, Miller Beer. You know what I want? I want my money's worth. You asked for it. Your money's worth and more. The Toyota Corolla Liftback. If you can find a better built small car than Toyota, buy it. We bet you can't. From its design to the quality of workmanship to the way it handles, you can't beat what Toyota gives you. Now's the time to see how much satisfaction you can get for your money. I am going to get my money's worth. More. You ask for it, you got it, Toyota. Next Saturday and Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports presents the final rounds of the PGA Tours Westchester Classic. That's next Saturday and Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Bronco mania has broken out again in the East Stands, and some of the Bronco mania fans are being escorted out. <laughs> or Dallas fans that should have been quiet. Pat Summerall with Sonny Jurgensen. Third and three Dallas. Fake to Newhouse. Lots of time for the Tony Hill. Hey, Prada. What a catch. Touchdown Dallas right between Bill Thompson and Bernard Jackson. How he hung on. I'll yeah. never know. He steals this one. Again, the play action. They were trying to go to Dorset on a little fly pattern but look at this right in a crowd two men around it what an adjustment he makes to catch that ball they were going for the interception that is concentration it is Humble Paul Smith earlier gives him a little shot pushes him down he was kind of kind to him then he didn't bruise him he could have done more <laughs> I thought it was Alvedo but it was Smith Timeout taken by Dallas as White goes over to talk to Tom Landry and Jim Myers. And so it's still tied at seven apiece with just over three and a half minutes left to play in the third quarter at Denver. When you break horses for a living and you do it wrong, they can break you first. But when you do it right, you can turn a terrified animal into a horse a man can count on. And now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. If you've got the time. If you've got the time. We've got the beer. Miller Beer. You know what I want? I want my money's worth. You asked for it. Your money's worth and more. The Toyota Corolla Liftback. If you can find a better built small car than Toyota, buy it. We bet you can't. From its design to the quality of workmanship to the way it handles, you can't beat what Toyota gives you. Now's the time to see how much satisfaction you can get for your money. I am going to get my money's worth. More. You asked for it. You got it, Toyota. Next Saturday and Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports presents the final rounds of the PGA Tours Westchester Classic. That's next Saturday and Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Bronco mania has broken out again in the East Stands, and some of the Bronco mania fans are being escorted out. <laughs> or a Dallas fan that should have been quiet. 
Pat Summerall with Sonny Jurgensen. Third and three Dallas. Fake to Newhouse. Lots of time for the Tony Hill. Here caught it. What a catch. Touchdown Dallas right between Bill Thompson and Bernard Jackson. How he hung on. I'll never know. He steals this one. Again, the play action. They were trying to go to Dorset on a little fly pattern, but look at this. Right in a crowd, two men around it. What an adjustment he makes to catch that ball. They were going for the interception. That is concentration. It is because the ball comes over his, his far shoulder. Watch him turn to catch this ball. Just sticks his hand. It didn't get a good look at the ball, but he makes the reception. Dallas extra point is good from Jay Sherrill. And the Cowboys assume the lead by seven at the moment with three minutes, 24 seconds to play in the third quarter. Cowboys 14, Denver 7. A surprising message to Rolaids users. Tums neutralizes one-third more acid than Rolaids. Watch this familiar demonstration. One Rolaids and one Tums tablet are added to stomach acid. Both neutralize the acid. But on those occasions, when your stomach has even this much more excess acid, Tums can still absorb it. Rolaids can't. Because tablet for tablet, Tums neutralizes one-third more acid than Rolaids. For acid indigestion and heartburn, take Tums. This is more than a car key. It's a philosophy. You only need one key for a Honda. Simple. It works on the hatch, it works on the gas cap, and the Honda runs on low lead, no lead, or regular gas. Simple. It works on the door, and it works on the ignition either side up. You see, at Honda, we feel that the key is simplicity. Honda, we make it simple. This fall, Ron Liebman is Kaz. He made a mistake and paid for it. But he studied law, and now he's a lawyer, out to win a tug-of-war with the system. Cavs. Joe Hansen will kick off for Dallas. Randy Rich, deep in the middle for Denver. At the goal line. He returned to the 37. Well, the 33, let's make it. That was a good drive, a good-looking drive by Danny White in Dallas. Ten play drive, Pat, 76 yards, and, uh, of course, the final 29 coming on that uh, Danny White to Tony Hill pass, picking up his second of the day. Well, that was a good return that time because uh, he had people down staring him in the face. Watch him. He makes a move here to avoid the first tackler. He fools some people, found a little daylight. Gets the ball out to about the 32-yard line. First down, Denver. And off to Keyworth. John Keyworth on a tough run. Picked up good yardage. Larry Bethea, the Cowboys' first-round draft choice, made that tackle. That was the same play that uh, Larry Canada had some success with in the first half where he made his big run. The give play, trying to influence. And who they're trying to do it to? None other than Larry Bethea. They're going right at the rookie, trying to influence him. Get him to go with the pulling guard. He's from Michigan State. The first round draft choice, as I said, is wearing number 93. Good answer. Greg Willis is really popped at just about enough yardage for a line of scrimmage, but Fred Willis hit by Cliff Harris. Where does he ever get hit? Watch. 45, cut back up. Willis cuts in and watch this contact. Boom. <laughs> Cliff Harris has been doing that just with that kind of enthusiasm for years and years. What a super player. Well, I never came up as a running back. Or a defensive back. Yeah. <laughs> Fred Willis comes out. Rob Lytle has replaced him in the Denver offensive setup. It is a first down in spite of all the banging around. Medical staff checking with Willis to see if he's okay, and he says he is. Rob Lytle spurns for four or five. 
Dave Stalls made the tackle. Bruce Huther, the new middle linebacker, replacing Bob Brunick, got a hand in there, too. Good smart call again. You know, Bruce Huther had an excellent game last week. Uh, they're running at uh, Stalls and uh, Bethea in the middle and a new linebacker in the middle, and uh, you expect them to do that, and uh, they had a little success then, got about five yards. Too tall, Jones is the only one of the regular defenders as far as the front four is concerned, still play. Henry Rose to Moses, he drops it. Had it for a second. Charlie Waters on the coverage with help from Aaron Kyle. Ball thrown a little inside of Moses in, and he's a little disgusted with himself for not holding on to it. But uh, Fenrose had the ball just inside. Difficult throw because he threw before Moses actually made his break, kind of spotting the thing, and it's hard to throw it in the right spot. Craig Penrose, the quarterback. The Broncos have another quarterback, Mortensen, Fred Mortensen from Arizona State, <laughs> who they tell us is also a good prospect. We'll tell you more about him in just a second. I want to see him. <laughs> Deflected away from Moses by Mark Washington. Mortensen, they say. Well, by the way, first of all, he has a degree in Chinese. And quarterbacks appreciates the humor of quarterbacks, so why don't you tell the story? A free agent, right, from Arizona State. Uh, you saw him play. Got an excellent arm. He has his degree. He speaks fluent, fluently in Chinese, right? Right. He calls a play in the huddle in Chinese <laughs> and <laughs> they, they break the huddle and they go to the line of scrimmage and uh, I'm sure some of the offensive linemen are saying I don't remember I must have slept through that meeting I don't remember that play but that's what happens people will go to the line of scrimmage not realizing that uh, they don't have that particular play Burke's kick was fielded by Washington the rookie from Georgia he gets back outside the 25 to about the 26 before Charles Jackson makes the tackle. Encouraging to see him back in there. He was shaken up a little bit earlier. 14-7 Dallas with a minute away to play in the third quarter. Ever watch a game on TV and see the players chugging down this stuff? You ever wonder why? Why Gatorade? I'm going to tell you. It's made to help put back fluids and salts you sweat away. Better than soft drinks, even better than water. It gives your body what it's thirsty for. Look, there's only one reason why professional jocks drink this stuff. The same reason you should, because it works. Gatorade, thirst quencher. What more could a body ask for? Oh, no, he's home. A kiss goodbye? You must go, and besides, your beard, it's rough. Then I'll shave. There's no time. I use his rise with three softeners. The rise will start to soak and soften my whiskers in no time. See? Rise helps me get a close shave quick. Mm, you're smooth, idiot. So quick. <laughs> Father! How about a close shave? Rise for a quick close shave. Next Sunday, August 20th at 2 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports presents live coverage of the Milwaukee 200 with Indy champion Al Unser, USAC point leader Tom Sneva, and more racing for the checkered flag. That's the Milwaukee 200 next Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Jim Cooper is back at center for Dallas. And we'll check out and see if they've worked out those problems that they were having earlier. Maybe Irv Cross has got some information. We'll check with him in a minute. Doug Dennison and Charles Young the running back for the Cowboys. They are deep in that spot. Salvi. He was juggling it. That's what they say. That's the call. Tough call. Thought he thought he had it. Let's watch Cooper. And the exchange with White. Exchange was pretty good then. A little bobble, though, really. A little bobble. Doesn't get a lot behind the ball. Ball comes off, kind of thumbs it a little bit. Hard to see. Take a look at this again. Officials right there on the play. He juggles it here. 
hard to tell. Another mix up. White collided with his running back. Jackson and Smith make sure he stays down. Herb Cross, I believe, has got some information. He just talked with John Fitzgerald about the exchange between the quarterback and the center. Let's see what he says. You got it, Irv? Yeah, Pat, you know, Sonny, you know what, how important it is to get that ball from the center. Apparently what uh, Jim Cooper was doing is that he was so concerned about that nose tackle on his head, he was snapping the ball and stepping forward. So consequently, he wasn't getting the ball all the way into uh, Danny White's hands. So he has to stand in there and make sure that snap is good before he releases on his blocking assignment. Did they work on it on the sideline? They did, yes. Third 11 for Dallas. Shotgun formation appears. Line of scrimmage to 25. Preston Pearson, the intended receiver, he had it a minute. Hit by Billy Thompson. Jackson over there, Randy Gratishaw are also involved in this dispute. And Danny White will stay in this contest to punt as Preston goes out. Boy, White was under a lot of pressure then by Smith again and Latimer. And almost threw it up again. Made a little, forced it a little bit, trying to get it to Pearson. Deep is Randy Rich, number 40 for the Broncos. Randy White will punt from about his 12-yard line by the time he takes his two steps. Hangs it high. Henderson down quick. Rich puts it in the field, but a flag is down. A flag is down. Back in Denver territory. Rich almost broke it. Does he ever take a look at this? Henderson forcing him to change direction, but when he changed direction, he found a lot of running room and some good blocking. Almost breaks it all the way, all for naught, because it's going to be called back, maybe. To have a little clipping. Officials discussing it there. Bronco coaches and players really upset with the call. Bob Frederick will let us know what it was in just a minute. Boy, this is a costly one, isn't it? I believe that it was charged against whoever was blocking Thomas Henderson, the first guy down. I think the big problem right here is that uh, time is run out in a quarter. Offensive illegal use of the hands on the return. We'll go into the fourth quarter. That's why all the players were hanging around midfield, standing around, because time had run out, and they're waiting to go to the other end of the field. So that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Dallas 14, the Broncos 7. We now pause for a word from your local station. Join Mike Morley and Dan for a second look at some of your favorite 60-minute stories tomorrow on CBS. The ball's at the 23. Craig Penrose is the Denver quarterback. Dave Preston and Larry Canada, the running back. And this is Canada. He breaks a couple, gets outside the 25 to about the 26. Bruce Huther. Makes the tackle. Too tall, still in there. Getting a lot of work out there. Oh, is this a conditioning? 102 degrees right. on the field, and gotta, gotta go 60 minutes. What are you doing? He won't keep growing very much longer. <laughs> Ed Jones. down at the 37 yard line hit by Bruce Hutter Bruce Hutter's been playing well might let, let that back go coming out of the backfield and he made uh, a little mistake he finds him uh, running wide over there you see him he's just an outlet pass and he has to throw it directly over too tall but you see nobody's up in the flat covering this man has a little running room Picks up a first down. 
Henry Rose gives to Canada again. And again, he breaks a couple of tackles and gets four five. Dave Stahl made a stop. 13 minutes and a half left in this game. 14 7 Dallas. Pat Summerall with Sonny Jurgensen at Mile High Stadium in Denver. If by chance we should end in a tie, we will go into overtime. Even in exhibition season, do we go into one overtime? Or one period. One period? Right. Or somebody scores, it's over. Canada getting the workout. I like the way he runs. Oh, good runner, isn't mm -hmm. he? It's like he's hungry for some yards when he gets it. He wants to get to the goal line. Good looking runner, big runner too, isn't he? 225. 225. Wisconsin rookie. Finds that opening. Protects the football. Stop by Larry Bethea. Pretty good drive going here. Running again at Bethea and stalls and Hother in the middle. Guy Brown at it in at linebacker now. Second year man out of Houston. Gregory's in at the other defensive end. Third and one. Greg Penrose, the quarterback. Canada and Lytle the setback. It'll be lighter. And he'll have the first. And more. He almost got away from Cliff Harris. If he had, we could have had a tie. A well-conceived play. Excellent play. Short yardage situations. Looked like the play's designed to go up the middle. It's not. Good blocking. Paul Howard pulled and made an excellent block. Springs him outside. Almost breaks it for the touchdown. Howard got the good block on Dennis Thurman. Just smothered him. Good play. The play looked like it was going right up the middle of the defense. And uh, it was actually designed to go outside. And they pick up a very crucial first down. They're at the Dallas 40. And the crowd, the pack house comes alive. Reverse coming to Moses. Guy Brown makes a heck of a play. Guy Brown beat the block. Claudy Miner was assigned to him. And Brown beat it. Watch this. You see again the misdirection, trying to get everybody flowing quickly. Good call. Moses coming back around. And you see right there, they defeated the block. He gets knocked down. Lytle has 38 yards in eight carries, and Larry Canada 36 in nine carries so far. They would be the Denver leaders, and they would lead anybody Dallas has, too. Penrose wants a time. He took a look at the nickel and said, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> I haven't got the play I want for this. I don't have the play, and if they give me the safety blitz, we're in the wrong formation. To op they audible to their option play. And I'm back in my own territory. 11.04 left to play. Dallas leads Denver 14-7. I'm not going to make the same mistake. Next time, I want my money's worth. You ask for it. Your money's worth and more. The Toyota Celica. If you can find a better built small car than Toyota, buy it. We bet you can. Toyotas are built to perform, to take it, to last. Now's the time to see how much satisfaction you can get for your money. I'm finally going to get my money's worth. More. You more. ask for it. You got it. Toyota. When you farm your own land, the work never ends. But you do it with pride and all the strength you can muster. But now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. America's quality beer, Miller High Life. When it's time to relax, one beer stands clear. Beer after beer. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Miller Beer. Tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports presents same-day coverage of the finals of the U.S. Clay Court Championships from Indianapolis. That's tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern. At the 45 now, second and 15. It's the Dallas 45 where Denver has the football. Craig Penrose, the quarterback. 
Third pass coming. Run down by Bethea. And Thurman, Dave Preston was. This is an interesting play. Uh, rolling left, uh, waggling back to uh, one side. Backs coming in this direction. Rolling back to his left side, then throwing a screen pass. Back out to the right. Dallas played good defense here. Dave Preston. Not much running room. Good play. Larry Bethea in on the tackle. It's up a third and long situation. Mark Washington is down and would appear to have a little problem with his right knee. Penrose face face. Got to go against that uh, nickel defense again now. Canada comes out of the Denver offensive huddle replaced by John Keyworth. Pat, I don't know about you, but in watching these two teams, considering that uh, they were the two teams in the Super Bowl last year, still impressed with the second exhibition game. Got to be impressed with the physical conditioning of both squads, too. There goes Mark Washington jogging off, which is encouraging. The big full house at Mile High Stadium in Denver. First time I've ever done a game here. Nice stadium, great stadium to play in. Super facility. 45 yard line, third and 15. Two Carl Jones almost got him. Pass intended for Moore, he had it. Was knocked loose by Randy Hughes. Excellent throw by Penrose under pressure. He actually has more open and watch Too Tall coming in from the left side of your screen. Right in his face. Just gets it away. Very accurately thrown ball. Should have had it. Should have had it and gets knocked away. Randy Hughes making the bump there. Mark Washington has a bruised right hip. Not a knee problem as we had thought. Bucky Dilts. With a flag down, back down the field. Dilts came up with a fine punt. Look where that ball finally went dead. <laughs> little delay here, indicated by Bob Frederick. Ball rolled dead at about the one yard line, but they'll have to do it again. 10 22 left to play. Offensive delay of the game, fourth down. Gene Washington is deep for Dallas. Very few penalties have been called. They say this guy can run the 40 and 4-4. Four, four. Reminiscing on some other genes. <laughs> Let's see if Bill did it again. No, this one goes into the end zone. It almost stopped, but not quite. Dallas will take over, leading by seven. They'll have it first and 10 at their own 20 with 10-14 left to play. Why put up with worn out shocks? Might have sized a car. Might have sized it. Might have sized it, soldier. Might have sized your car and you'll never buy shocks for it again. Because at Midas, if anything ever goes wrong with a lifeguard, superguard, or spring guard shock, we'll replace it free as long as you own your car. Worn out shocks? Don't compromise. Midas size. Don't look now, but there's a run on J.C. Penney plain pockets, jeans, and corduroys. Because right now, you can save 20% on every pair. They've got sensational styling, rugged construction, and for a limited time, a price tag you won't believe. Come to J.C. Penney and get a pair. But don't walk, run, and save 20%. J.C. Penney plain pockets, jeans. The big, big difference between us and them is the pocket and the price. Next Saturday and Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports presents the final rounds of the PGA Tours Westchester Classic. That's next Saturday and Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern. The 
Bronco crowd has remained, and so have the Bronco cheerleaders. Still hoping. 10-14 left to play, plenty of time. Eddie White still the Dallas quarterback. And he is going to throw on first down, does to Doug Dennison. Tackle by Terry Peters. Pretty good tackle, and if he misses him, he's got a little running room up the sideline. I was hoping we'd get a look at uh, Glenn Carano. He's saying he's pushing Danny White. He's very good so far in training camp. He would be the young man from Nevada, Las Vegas. Quarterback that dressed sometimes last year and sometimes didn't, but who is an outstanding prospect. There he is. I like his motion. Tony Hill with some room. The reverse gets Hill still on his feet out of bounds at about the 37-yard line in front of the Denver bench. Here's another guy who's been pretty impressive today. Two touchdown catches and a fine run right there. He Down. has. You know, you wonder, Pat, if uh, looking at Denver's reverse earlier, it just reminded Tom Landry, maybe we should try yeah. our reverse and see what we get out of it. Take a look at it. Work on the execution of the play. Hill makes a good run. Both teams waited to the fourth quarter to uh, give it a try. Don Latimer, number 72, made the tackle finally on Hill, but it's a Dallas first down at their own 36. Ball is loose and Denver has it. Another mistake by the Cowboys. Let's take a look. Where's the ball? Again, the exchange, it looks like. Danny White losing the handle on it. There you see it. Great opportunity again for the Broncos on the 35-yard line. They have it first and 10 as their crowd comes along. Norris Weiss back in, a quarterback. Guy Brown has the intercept. Oh, Mike Hegman, I beg your pardon. Hegman took the ricochet. Hegman has the Dallas touchdown. How it turns around. How quickly does it turn around? Great play by Hegman. Bad choice of receivers by Norris Weiss. Forced the ball right into the flat. Had time to throw, but look at the coverage. Tried to force the ball to Bill Gay, the rookie tight end. And Heckman comes up for his stride down the sideline. Heckman is a three-year veteran. 225-pound linebacker. Has been a reserve. He's from Tennessee State. A school that's produced an awful lot of good players for the NFL. Including one... Ed to call Jones. Good from Jay Sherrill. 21 7 Dallas. With nine minutes and nine seconds left to play in this game, Dallas takes the commanding lead. The interception by Mike Hegman. If you suffer with athlete's foot, you should know what these students helped us prove. Here at the University of New Mexico, in a major clinical study, proof that nothing is more effective than Desinex. We use students with sore, itching athlete's foot to test number one Desinex against the two other leading brands. Results? New scientific evidence that short of a prescription, nothing is better than Desinex. Nothing. So if you're still suffering with athlete's foot, don't blame Desinex. A lot of cars are like pizzas. To get a lot on them, you gotta pay a lot extra. But not Chevy Chevette. It comes with a lot already on it. Chevette ignores the pizza principle. With it, you get an AM radio, reclining bucket seats, console, white striped tires, and more, all at no extra cost. So avoid the pizza principle. Hi, Richie. Get a car with a lot already on it. Get the best-selling small car in America, Chevy Chevette. It's a lot of car for the money. Hi, Richie. Hi, kid. People comes to television with the Liza celebration and a Dolly imitation. Learn the latest dance creation. People starring Phyllis George, new this fall. 
Number one in Denver, maybe. But number two in this contest. Dallas leads 21-7. Johansson will kick off. Rich is deep for Denver. The line drive spinner hits. Picked up by number 81, Steve Simini. And down he goes. Mars Weiss getting a call again to go back in. You don't think that's the loneliest spot in the mm. in this stadium right now for that young man? Third year out of Mississippi, got to walk on that field after throwing an interception. After you've done it two or three times in a row, perhaps it gets worse. Yeah. <laughs> Weiss also threw the touchdown pass to Riley Odom. Yes, he did. By the way, Odoms is taking his shoulder pads off for that bruised shoulder, and he won't be back. Dave Preston and Larry Canada, the running backs for Denver, and Weiss is going right back. Larry Bethay, uh, Bethay, or rather, and Dave Stalls. Well, he made a good decision there, Weiss did. He made the right decision taking the ball down. He didn't have anybody open. Almost wanted to force the throw, but he decided to run with it. There are his stats, two for four, 30 yards and a touchdown. But that 66-yard one that he had to Hegman, that completion was the one that bothers him the most. That's the one he'd like to get back. Haven Moses splits out wide to the right. Up church is left. Overthrown. Flag is down back in the backfield of the Broncos. Dennis Thurman was the defender. Wait a minute. Are we going to have a holding call? Is this so different than last year? It Remember is a holding, holding call, yeah. And it is a holding call. It had to be where the defensive lineman, or he was, uh, the offensive lineman kept him from taking the side and tried to hold him. He almost had to just grab him. That's what you almost have Offensive to do. Offensive holding. Number 75, refused, third down. Bill Bain, the Bill, holder. Bill Bain is the holder. Penalty was refused, Canada comes out. Keyworth is in, along with Dave Preston. Flag is down on the other side of the field. Now this is going to be that first type of call where we're going to find out if it's offensive pass interference or defensive, who made the contact in the secondary. And that's what they're talking about now. Contact was made out of the five-yard zone. Charlie Waters is one of the people involved. How about a look from Sky Eye? How about Sky Eye? Give us a good bird's eye view here. Let's see what we have. This could be the call. Here it is. Illegal chuck on the defense. Decline. There is the chuck right there. 41. Charlie Harris guilty of it. You see him trying to keep the tight end from going across after he has passed five yards in the line of scrimmage. He cannot impede his progress. There's Canada. That is Guy Brown who got him out of bounds. Good play from Brown. Two Broncos a little slow getting up after going downfield. One of them is Bobby Maples. The other is Claudie Miner. The huge right offensive tackle. In fact, one of the other uh, rule changes this year that uh, I find interesting and have always felt that it should have been included is no double touch anymore where you see an offensive receiver touch the ball and it goes to another one this year they've eliminated that it counts now it will count eligible receiver anybody can catch it takes to canada from reese reese throws haven moses is whacked in the back by mark washington and that one had a sting a little bit does it ever sting what a good throw again by Weiss going back, waiting for Moses. Really, Hank stays in the pocket and throws the thing. Really makes a 
accurate throw because Washington really stings him just as he's catching that thing. And he's coming off the field now. He'll be replaced by Rick Upchurch. And there's Haven Moses coming out. He really took a shot from Mark Washington. Washington replacing Benny Barnes at left cornerback. Here it is. Oh. Denver first down at the 30 as Weiss drops again. Trying to pick off, but everything collapsed, led by Larry Bethea. And again, everything covered in the secondary. Good coverage by the Dallas secondary and their linebackers. Nobody to go to. Weiss pulls it down and runs. Well, he's been very accurate, made good decisions since that interception. Bill Gregory helped him out. Larry Bethea on the defensive play. Weiss, we are told, makes things happen. One of the things he made happen was not so good. Second down to go, 16 yards they need at their own 36. Moses back in the game goes in motion. And Weiss looks forward. Washington there, Moses prevented an interception. He did. That shows you a veteran receiver. Very smart play on his part, knocking the ball away from Washington. Ball hung a little bit. Could have been thrown a little sooner, but uh, good throw, accurately thrown, but good play by Moses. Look at this. Knocks the ball away. Looks like he's the defender. They say the acquisition of Haven Moses is perhaps the best trade the Broncos have ever made. And I think I would agree. Mike Montler's acquisition, the center, was a good one. Obviously, so was Morton. First time he takes a shot on the back of Cliff Harris. Boy, another, another great play by Moses. Going down, getting open. They've been going to him every play. And the Broncos are on the march. You see they're in a zone defense. Washington turns him loose. And this is the thing, finding that open spot in the zone and then pays the price for catching it. A good, good play again by Norris Weiss moving around in the pocket then going to the open receiver. First down yardage for Denver. First and 10. Ball at the Dallas 18. Score, Dallas 21. Denver 14, uh, Denver 7, looking for 14. Headlock at the 11. Guy Brown, the tackler, the tight end that crossed the middle. A little check over by the tight end, Eglock. See it again, everything here in this drive has been play action passes, faking the draw. You see 85 coming across. A little crossing patterns going underneath the linebackers. That's what you mentioned earlier, Pat. His tight end is going to be more involved in the pass offense this year because they can't be jammed and pushed around by the linebackers. Second and three from the 11. Out goes Larry Bethea. Greg Sharm, I believe, made the tackle on Dave Preston. He had a lot of help. Larry Bethea had been injured earlier in training camp, and now he lets off again. The Cowboys first down franchise, first down Denver on that last play. First and goal it is at the seven. Landry a little uh, concerned about Bethea, the fact that he hasn't had an awful lot of work during training camp. Dave Preston and Fred Willis, the running backs for Denver. Willis got tripped up by Randy White as soon as he touched the ball, and it looks like Randy White might be shaken up a little bit. That was the play. They've had the success running the influence play. White last year may have been susceptible to that play. Not this year. He hit the fullback. One of the Dallas defensive players looked over at Ernie Stotter, the defensive coordinator and coach, and said Randy White might be shaken up a little bit. I'd like to take him out. Ernie doesn't know anything about injuries. Ernie said, tell him, keep going. <laughs> How could he be hurt? Cooper go after him again. 
They go that side. Preston. Back for touchdown. Gary Preston. Cuts it in the end zone. Excellent play. Running back to the weak side against the flex. Dave Preston gets outside. Rookie from Bowling Green. Good blocking. He was hungry for the goal line. Got in. Take a look at it from ground level again. Got some good blocking. I think Dallas defense uh, a little late reacting here. Henderson coming across the offside linebacker, the last man to make contact. Get back in. We still have a football game. You think about that one interception, but for that, a touchdown by Hagman. We would be tied as Turner hits, but there's a flag down. Jim Turner has just added the 14th point, and it'll stand. Penalty was against Dallas. Right. Defense. Defense, offside, points good, carry it over, following kickoff. You've seen how we build the Firestone 721 radial. Here's how we back it up with the full two-year warranty. If a Firestone 721 becomes unserviceable in the two years after you purchase it because of a defect in workmanship or materials, we'll replace it free. Only road hazard and in-service abuse are not covered. This offer is good on every 721 sold for passenger car use between now and October 31st by any Firestone dealer or store. The car can do a lap in 60 seconds. You can do the car in 19. And that's the way it has to be, because you don't win races on the track unless you win them in the pit first. And now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. Miller beer. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Miller beer. Here's a touchdown. This was the end of a 12 play drive for 71 yards. A touchdown by Dave Preston to give the Broncos a shot here with 332 left in the fourth quarter, trailing 21 to 14. Lonnie Perrin's kickoff is handled by Washington. Here slips, fumbles. Dallas keeps it. They retain possession. I'll tell you, that tight end, Ken Moore, hurdled about three guys and went over the top to try to make that tackle. Back to the 16-yard line is where Washington met disaster. Danny White is still the Dallas quarterback. Doug Dennison, one of the running backs. And I believe Charles Young is the other. That's correct. Nobody is left that I can tell. And they're all stomping right now in the middle stand. It's back to Dennison. Doug outside the 20. Charles Jackson made the tackle, along with Larry Riley. Well, they'd like Dennison to have that ball. Good, tough runner. Gets the tough yards for yep. them. See the play coming in here. Golden Richards giving it to Danny White there. Six-yard pickup from Dennison makes it second and four. Dallas 21. Denver 14. Mile High Stadium in Denver. 245 left to play in this contest as Danny White gives it in to Doug Dennison. He cuts up for a first down and more. Lost the football. Pat Donovan got it back. Ooh, Ooh that was a break. And look what we're seeing coming in right now. And this is what Red Miller said he would do with a chance to win the football game. He's coming back in with his regulars. His starting unit's coming back in to play. He said that's why you play exhibition games or any game, and that's to win. And since Red Miller's been in Denver, they're 20 and 4 overall. I don't know if that's the answer, but something's working, and there is Red Miller. Landry 
Doesn't seem too concerned. I've known him a long time, and he never has seemed too concerned. <laughs> Joe Collier, the defensive coordinator, used to be a head coach at Buffalo, watching. It is 21-14, the Cowboys. Broadway star Shelley Bruce for Color Track by RCA. As Orphan Annie, my curls are auburn, my dress is bright red, and my dog is Sandy Brown. If these colors don't look right, see the 1979 Color Track. Getting the color right is what it's all about. And now, with channel lock tuning, it tracks the color more automatically than ever. Before you see the color, the Color Track system grabs it, aligns it, defines it, sharpens it, tones it, and locks the color on track. RCA is making television better and better. <laughs> Don't forget the CBS Sports Spectacular next Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. The Travers and NASCAR's Talladega 500. We were talking earlier about the Travers and the availability of jockey Steve Cawthon. It does look like he'll be back. Supposedly back on Wednesday riding again, which would make him available next week to renew that rivalry with Aladar. Aladar and Affirm. Those two horses have met ten times. Affirmed as one eight. That will be next Saturday on the Sports Spectacular at five Eastern Time. Dennison goes deep in the eye behind Charlie Young. Charlie Hill in motion. Young breaks into the secondary and he is close to first down yardage. Another great prospect who has been plagued by injuries. Charlie Young. And Red Miller saying, I didn't put you back in there for this to happen. <laughs> uh, timeout call by the Deven Denver defensive unit with a minute and 50 seconds left to play. Dallas leads by seven. 21 14 the score. Taking a look at a lot of people, I'm wondering if Landry being concerned about whether or not he had had the opportunity to see this many people. We will look at Red Miller there with some concern and Danny White going over to talk with uh, Tom Landry. But uh, whether or not he'd get a chance to look at the people that he wanted to and uh, with only two weeks of the exhibition season left. I'll tell you something about Tom Landry. He may be emotionless now, as some people say. He is obviously a very intelligent man, but he was a tough, tough player. I understand I've heard that about him before. You mentioned that to me. I mean, a hitter. I have not seen this formation before, and now it changes as Hill goes in motion. And Doug Dennison gets the football on the Dallas first down. Now again, it was jarred loose, and again, the Denver defensive unit will probably take a timeout. Yes, being inside of the two minute warning, you. you Kind of figure they would because Dallas is going to take their time after getting the first down. They can let a lot of that time run off the clock, which is exactly what they're doing. No hurry at all to get the playoff. Tony Hill shuffles out of the game. The clock's still running now. A minute 17 16. It'll be a first and 10 Cowboys from their own 48. Young and Dennison, the running backs. Flag is down. I don't believe they were set ever. <laughs> well, they got set. I think there's a little delay, too. They let a little too much of that clock run off. Preseason games such as this, Super Bowl repeats. Offense. Listen to Bob game. Sometimes can become very difficult. But in this case, Bob Stinner has been one of the guys who's made it so easy for us. It's been directed by Duke Struck. The Duker. Responsible for Sky Eye and Sonny and Pat as well. <laughs> Ray Ball, Brooks Graham, our field operations manager. Good friend Jay Fairman. Doug Dennison with the football again. Dennison struggles. They get back to the line of scrimmage. Billy Thompson made the tackle. I'm out with 54 seconds left to play. Dennison, of course, has been in Dallas for quite a spell. Five years. He's 205 pounds, six feet from Cutstown State. 
There were years when he only played inside the 10 yard line. That's right. You know, the, for, the, for his size and everything, they do like him uh, with the football. And uh, he's six feet, 205 pounds. And uh, they like it. They think he's the toughest runner on short yarded situation. But uh, now they have another one. And of course, that's their rookie they like. And that's the lowest. Blackwell they feel that he's a tough uh, short yardage runner and they've also also got Charlie Young if he's healthy Todd Christensen who's looked so strong in training camp they've got the two starters new house and of course Scott Laidlaw's laid up this week along with uh, they got Tony Larry Dor Brinson Larry Brinson I'd forgotten him <laughs> Dorsett can't forget him and who else a designated uh, halfback Preston, Preston Pearson, Pearson yeah <laughs> So a wealth of running backs as the Cowboys stroll to the line of scrimmage. Not only a wealth of running backs, but a wealth of talent. And it's uh, very obvious in watching them here in their uh, second exhibition game. Denver is out of timeouts, and so they'll protect Danny White. Dallas will just let it run out. Denver can't stop it. It will now be third down, and uh, Denver should not be able to get the, the football back. There's the clock will not stop. Only one more snap does it. This is something where the only thing you got and the only hope you have is say, come on, Reuben Carter. Make that man fumble that ball. Don't forget our next. Preseason game comes in two weeks. We'll be at Foxborough, Massachusetts for the match between the Patriots and the Cleveland Browns. August the 27th, that is. That day will begin with the return of the NFL Today at 1.30 Eastern Time and following the game, a special edition of the NFL Today with a preview look at the 1978 season and a new look at the new lady who will sit with Brent Musburger and Irv Cross. Miss Kennedy. I think you'll be impressed. See Tom Landry strolling off there. He was just congratulated by Ed Miller went over and shook his hand. Every change you say, you know, you know, you Never. know that man's emotional and is uh, pleased with the effort, as both coaches should be. Uh, pleased with the performance of their players under very hot conditions there, 102 down on the field. And uh, I'm sure they're just glad that we hope that there were no serious injuries and uh, nobody sustained anything that's going to put them out for the season for any length of time with only two weeks left in the preseason. You would hope not. Let's get uh, Sonny, if we may, a uh, reflection and a comment from Irv Cross, who is down on the field. Irv? Do you hear me, Irv? I sure do, Pat. You know, uh, watching the Denver Broncos and Dallas Cowboys walk off the field here, you can't help but think how much these players respect one another. You know, it is a preseason game. It's only the second preseason game for both ball clubs, but yet and still, it meant a great deal to come in here and show the number one team in the league and the number two team in the league, of course, who's number one. The Dallas Cowboys, of course, won today 21 to 14 by taking a look at some of the youngsters and rookies. The Denver Broncos did the same thing, but we saw some good, hard-hitting, clean football played down here. The intensity on the field was very high for the entire 60 minutes, and believe me, no, it wasn't Super Bowl 12. It's not Super Bowl 13. But this August day, we saw one great football game. All right, Irv, thank you. I enjoyed hearing your comments throughout the day. And Sonny, I, you know, we've made a lot and many comments, I think, during the progress of the game about the rule changes. And I think late in the game, we got a chance to see that that five yard zone where the defensive backs and linebackers cannot hit a receiver once he gets past that five yard limit is going to prove to be a, a boon to the passing attacks throughout the league. It's going to have an influence on the, 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 the success of uh, the passing teams, the teams that really want to put it up and move the ball in those last two minutes. And we saw that when Dallas had to do it and when uh, Denver had to do it, they were successful finding the seams in the zones. They did it consistently. Nobody, the linebackers couldn't jam the receivers. You know, you look at this 21-14, but except for that 66-yard interception by Mike Heckman, uh, you know, we could we could be here still going in an overtime. They could still be playing. Once again, the final score was Dallas 21, 
Denver 14. A reminder, please be with us tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern time for the U.S. Clay Courts Championships from Indianapolis. And please join us again on August the 27th when we bring you another preseason football game with the New England Patriots hosting the Cleveland Browns. Pre-game show with Brent Musburger, Irv, and new addition to the team, Jane Kennedy, will start at 1.30 Eastern time. So then, for Sonny Jurgensen and Irv Cross, this is Pat Summerall saying goodbye from Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Firestone, makers of the new steel-belted Radio 721. Ask a friend about Firestone. The Miller Brewing Company, Brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. And by the folks at Chevrolet and Chevrolet dealers coast to coast. The NFL on CBS is a presentation of CBS Sports. Girl Called Hatter Fox, tonight's movie here on CBS.